Hi everyone, it's John from What Up, and welcome back to another video. And we're talking New York Comic Con special screenings and edition scripts. Yes, it's time for a bunch of Wheel of Time news. And don't forget, tomorrow is Walt Wednesday. And here, What Up, we haven't forgotten you folks. We're going to release a special season three tidbit tomorrow as part of a very special Walt Wednesday. And it's going to be about a character that we're not going to see in season three that maybe some fans sort of expected to see. But make sure if you want more information on that, tune in tomorrow for Walt Wednesday. Now. All of that being said, if you're not sure what we do here at What Up, well, it's pretty much self-evident at this point. We talk Wheel of Time, whether it be rumors, news, leaks, set videos, pictures, casting calls, you name it, we talk Wheel of Time all the time because that's really what I like to do. So if you like that sort of thing as well, make sure you subscribe to the channel and of course, click that like button if you like the videos we're doing here because it doesn't mean a whole lot to us if you do enjoy what we're doing because that's pretty much why we do it because I like to share my passion for Wheel of Time in all forms with pretty much everyone else. Now, that being said, before we get into the video, I do have to give a bit of a spoiler warning since we're talking elements of Season 3, and we may ruin some things if we are correct in some of our assumptions. So, spoiler warning, if you have not seen the first two seasons of Sony and Amazon's Wheel of Time show streaming right now in Prime Video, and you have not read the first four books of Robert Jordan's Wheel of Time series, that's The Eye of the World, The Great Hunt, The Dragon Reborn, and The Shadow Rising, be forewarned, I may ruin plot points and character arcs from both of those mediums. All right, that being said, let's get on to the news. All right, so New York Comic Con happened over the weekend, and it was a surprise, but not a surprise, if that makes any sense at all. I'm going to try to explain myself here in a second. Uh, so there were a couple of really huge strikes that happened this year that affected the entertainment industry. The very first one was the Writers Guild. So the WGA went on strike due to poor working conditions, poor compensation, and a number of other issues. And recently their demands were met by the studios and they stopped their strike. So during that time frame, anybody part of the Writers Guild couldn't actively promote, talk about, or work on the projects that they were involved in. And that included Rape Judkins, the showrunner of The Wheel of Time. So when he had his Writers Guild hat on, he couldn't promote the project, but he could still be on set and sort of do his job as a showrunner. So we didn't see or hear much from him or pretty much anyone else about the Wheel of Time in the lead up to season two or during most of season two. Now, that strike is over. So when that strike ended, we all sort of thought that, well, perhaps this panel at the New York Comic Con would still go on, which it did. And we knew that Rafe Jenkins would likely be there because he is the man behind the show and he would likely be there to promote and talk about what happened in season two as well as what may happen in season three. Now, sag Aftra is still on strike. That's the actor's strike. So that's completely different, but still for the same issues. Compensation, working conditions, AI is a huge issue right now. They don't want their likenesses stolen and used in perpetuity without being compensated by the studios. There's a bunch of stuff ongoing there. Um, now... That isn't to say that Wheel of Time isn't filming right now, because it totally is, because there are very few people on the Wheel of Time set that are a part of SAG-AFTRA. However, um, they are not actively promoting the show either, so the actors aren't coming out, they're not doing a bunch of things because of the strikes that are ongoing right now, they're supporting their fellow actors, they're supporting what's going on. Um, and in addition, Wheel of Time is still filming, it's still going on right now. Now, it is not a... Um, one of the projects that had to be shut down, so it didn't shut down. There are a ton of things still that they're filming, even though the strikes are ongoing, whether they be non-union projects, whether they be projects with waivers, whether they be independent projects, whether they be um, projects that have special permission. Wheel of Time is one of those things that is still actively filming. Um, but we kind of all knew or suspected that we would not see any of the actors or actresses from the show there because, let's face it, if sag actors on strike, it's kind of bad form to show up even if you're not part of that union uh, to promote your show when other members of the union are on your show. So we didn't expect to see any of the cast members there. So we didn't. What we did see, however, was an executive producer and a couple of members of the visual effects team. They come on and they talk for a little bit about a bunch of different things, namely uh, how channeling came to be what their thought process was with that, how they'd seen something called light painting, uh, which I'm very familiar with, and I'm sure a lot of you uh, are, are as well, and they wanted to incorporate that in the show and use that as part of the channeling. They talked about some of their favorite memorable moments on set, uh, and for a really odd turn of events, they were sort of self-deprecating and talked a whole lot about how unimportant they were, how their job was mostly scheduling, and it wasn't very exciting. Um, all in all, they didn't give us much new information about Wheel of Time at all that we didn't already know, um, and that panel was sort of saved by Rafe Judkins coming on. So Rafe Judkins popped in the panel near the end, he spent the last few minutes answering a couple of different questions, and he dropped quite a few bombshells about Season 3, which we're going to get into right now. All right, so the first question he was asked uh, that, that really takes precedence here that uh, has to do with Season 3 is, you're already working on Season 3. What can you tell us about what's coming up and maybe what books we might want to dip back into? 
Rafe answers, I mean, one nice thing about season three is that we really get to focus on one book this season, which is book four, which is one of the best books in the entire series. I'm glad that we get to spend a really a whole season doing it, and I just flew back about 36 hours through three continents and arrived here today because I was standing in Roydian, and then I flew here. So that is one thing fans will get to see for sure in season three, the old waste. Now, there's been a ton of speculation about this since uh, Rafe Jenkins had announced that book four would be almost the sole focus, and I say almost because I'm sure there are elements of other books in that season as well. Um, of season three. Now, we were all really hoping we get Roydy and we were really hoping we get the waste, but we didn't really know for sure. There was a lot of speculation, a few hints about it here and there, but we didn't 100% know that that's what was going to happen. Now that we know that he was actually standing in Roydy and he was actually, you know, there prior to going to New York Comic Con, we're going to get those scenes. We're going to get to see, hopefully, uh, Randall Thor get crowned of the Karakarn. We get to see maybe those dragon tattoos. I really don't know exactly how they're going to play it, but that ties into the second half of the video with the audition script with our not so favorite Aiel. We'll talk about that in a bit. Next question was, the reaction to the season was positive and overwhelming. Are there any theories you saw throughout the season that kind of surprised you? Like, oh, you're closer to what I expect them to be close to. Ray says, I mean, one thing I like to look at is theories about the Forsaken. We really felt like the Forsaken are such an incredible part of books that we wanted to bring them to the forefront in season two, kind of earlier than they really are forefronted in the books. And I've seen some very serious commentary online about the Forsaken and who or who may not be in the show. And I can, I mean, it's not really even a confirmation, but I confirm that we have cast and put on, a, on set a Forsaken you have not seen in the show as of yet, and you will know them from the books. So essentially what he's saying is we're seeing a brand new Forsaken in the show for season three that we haven't already seen. Now we've already seen Lanfear, Shamael, and uh, Mogadian, so it's another Forsaken. If we're talking Waste, I'm going to guess probably Asmodian, maybe someone else, but probably Asmodian. That's my guess anyway, because if Rand goes to the Waste, it's not likely he's going to cart Logan along with him uh, to teach him. That was sort of, I think, uh, a misdirection for a lot of the season, and it was sort of Moraine's plans that went awry. I don't think Loghain's going to be teaching Rand at this point. I think he's going to actively see the Forsaken Asmodian and, and get taught by him. Sorry, right, so the next question that uh, was of importance to the Comic-Con was, so other than that, any other teases you can give us? Ray says, I think one of the other cool things we get to explore is the Aiel culture. There are these incredible warriors in the Wheel of Time world, and we get to really meet them and see them go to where they're from and also get to explore some of the other characters in the world of dreams and dream walking with these Aiel. I think it's a really cool thing to get to do in season three because it's one of those unique elements in the Wheel of Time that no other book series really has. So we get to explore that in season three. Now, we knew we were getting Aiel. We knew for sure we were getting something happening because the introduced Avienda in, this, in Bane and Chiad and um, he's talked about Roydian, but dream walking... There's been a couple of spots during the first season I thought would have been a really, really good little tease to have some dreamwalking elements put in there because they centered a lot around Telerandroid and they didn't. So I think they're saving that for a big reveal in season three. Now, in addition to that, there was a special screening of The Wheel of Time in New York and Rafe Judkins did attend and he dropped a couple of more hints. So we know we're getting Roydian, we know we're getting Dreamers, we know we're getting the Aiel Waste, but he also mentioned Seafolk and Tenchicho. So this... The focus of this season is going to be mostly Rand's story and Perrin's story, but that doesn't mean that the others are not going to be in it. So if they're talking Tanchicho, it means that likely most of the other characters are going to be centered in and around Tanchicho, which will be a bit of a change from the books because not everyone goes there, but I think most of the other major players will show up there. And in fact, we're going to be talking about that in one of my leaks videos in the next couple of weeks um, because Tanchicho was a big element of one of them until, of course, it got released officially this week. So I'm going to have to rework that just a little bit and uh, perhaps give you some more tidbits about the storylines and things we may see there. I'm not 100% on what uh, what we're going to talk about just yet, but we'll we'll find something to talk about. Now, all of this was really, really interesting stuff uh, that happened over the weekend. However, what's even more interesting is WattSeries.com released another tidbit today, a huge leak from them, and it's an addition script that features Kooladin. Now, Kooladin is an Aiel that uh, people love to hate. All right, so if you don't know who WattSeries.com are, I've left a link to their article down below in the description box, and I implore you folks to go over to their website, bookmark it, and check back often. They've released more Wheel of Time news than every other source, including all of the official sources combined. They are basically the sole party that gets us through the in-between-the-seasons time. So if you want to hold the longing at bay, as it's so affectionately called, WattSeries.com is your best bet. Please go over there and support them in any way you can because they are doing the lights work in keeping all of the Wheel of Time fandom sane in between seasons. Now, that being said, um, if you're new here and you haven't heard of them before, 
when you're over there, leave a comment on one of their articles saying you're coming from what up. That's where you heard about them from, just so they know that uh, I'm trying my very best to send as many viewers to them as possible. So, in this article, it talks about an additional script for Cooladin. So we know we're getting the Aiel Wakes. We know we're getting uh, Roydian for season three. Rave Jokins. I just mentioned that not long ago. However, this is really interesting. The dialogue in this comes almost straight from the books in a couple of spots and uh, gives us little hints to what we're going to see. So the dialogue states as follows. Cooladin says, you would have us declare our allegiance to a wetlander. An Aiel, not specified who the Aiel is, but an Aiel. It is a prophecy foretold. Cooladin interrupts. A prophecy 3,000 years old, translated from a dead language, passed down generations from mouth to mouth, twisted, misinterpreted, fit around this imposter. Only you were fool enough to believe him, but I know the truth. I've entered Roydian. I've seen our people's past and our future. The Aiel says you've disobeyed the wise ones by entering Roydian without permission. Cooladin says yes, without, why not? He who comes with the dawn brings change, does he not? The Aiel says you call yourself he who comes with the dawn, then tell me, what did you see there? The uh, Kuladin says, I will speak of it with no one, not even you, but what I saw was holy. I am holy. I know the glory of our people's past, the glory that I'll bring back to us. I am Kuladin of the Domai Sept of the Shaedo Aiel. I am he who comes to the dawn. Now bow before me. Now, one of the caveats of WattSeries.com does say is that uh, he who comes to the dawn is synonymous with Karakar, which is he who comes to the dawn, is how it's translated. So, some things, some liberties might be taken there with that. Now, we know we're getting Roydian, we know we're getting Cooladin now. So what does that mean for the show? We know that Rafe Jenkins has said on record that season three will load mostly folks on Rand and Parent's storyline with some, it's going to have some other offshoots for getting Tanchicho and stuff too. But I'm guessing that Rand's story will most likely be centered around the waste. Does that mean we're not getting the Stone of Tear? Well, I'm thinking maybe we'll get the Stone of Tear later rather than earlier. So for example, at the end of season two, Rand's injured. He's kind of laid up a little bit. And then if it was following the book series exactly, we'd go through the events of the Dragon Reborn, um, where he would eventually end up in the Stone of Tear. He would eventually take Kalidor. He would eventually fight Ashamiel for a third time, repetitive much, and win again uh, with no training again. Uh, and um, then the Aiel would be there. They would help him take the stone. And then later after that, in the fourth book, in the end of the third book, uh, Ares when that, they would spend that in the Waste. So... There's a bunch of stuff that we're probably going to skip or it's going to be moved around. Do they need to go to the stone right now? No. In fact, in my opinion, and this is something I'll probably take a lot of shit for from you folks, I think the stone can be cut completely. It was sort of a placeholder prophecy in the books anyway. Yeah, he pulled Kalendor out of the stone. It was very important much later on, but it was an afterthought for most of the book series. So can they either ignore it for a bit or use it later or perhaps rework it into something a little bit different? Totally. And will they do that? Well, if they're cutting large swaths of the storyline to fit into eight seasons, especially where they're concentrating season three on one book, book four, I think it's likely we're going to see a lot of that stuff cut. Now, all of that being said, we know we're getting Kuladin and the Shaedo in the third season. So does that mean we're setting up the entire arc of the Shaedo in the third season? Are we seeing Rand go to the way, skip her proclaimed as a Karakarn? Will he then muster all the Aiel forces and fight Kuladin's forces? Will that happen? Will we get that big battle between Kuladin and someone else? I'm not going to say who because hitting the spoiler warnings further on. Will we see all that in the third season? Or will that be pushed over multiple seasons? I think likely what they'll try to do is they'll either try to end the Kuladin arc in one season or perhaps maybe two, but that's, I think, stretching it. They'll use him more as a driving force to push the story forward than a major, major multi-season plot line. Because let's face it, there are a ton of things in the books that could be multi-season plot lines and probably should be if we had unlimited seasons. We don't. We're very limited. We have eight seasons here. That's pretty much all Amazon's going to give Rafe and the rest of the crew. So... I think maybe we'll see that arc start and maybe even finish with the offshoots that happen later on in the the, the rest of the seasons. But either way, I'm not 100% sure. I, I have no inside knowledge of how they're going to work things out for season three and beyond. But to me, that makes sense, especially considering they have to accelerate and cut a lot of things. We're likely going to see that happen very quick in season three. I'm not saying a half season arc, but maybe a full season arc with Rand in the waste, and then he moves back in and takes the stone to tear at the end of the season. That's likely where we're going to end up. I should do a speculation video for season three before I know too much. Anyway, let me know in the comments down below what you folks think. How is that going to play out? How is Kooladin going to fit into the storyline of Season 3? How are the Aiel, especially the Shaedo, going to fit in? Are we going to see elements of Books 4, 5, and 6? Are we going to see elements of Book 4 and 5? Or just Book 4 and have that whole thing just compressed 
and cut uh, cut up a little bit so it fits more into the show. Let me know what you folks think in the comments down below. And again, like I said earlier, watch out tomorrow. We got a special Walt Wednesday treat for you folks. Another leak from Season 3 talking about a certain specific character that is not going to show up. All right. Thank you so very much for sticking with us here to the very end. Here's to many more.